Okay, this is another video in this series of uh, beginner videos for Sh Fusion 360. They're, they're exercises. So we're taking a technical drawing and trying to replicate it in Fusion 360 as a 3D model. This one is the index feed. And this one's, this one's kind of interesting because uh, it's more than just sketching and extruding. There may be a couple opportunities to look at some other things in the solid, solid workspace. Um, I think I'm going to approach this by looking at the front of it and, uh, and seeing, seeing if that works out. So again, just trying to find whatever silhouette seems like it would give us the most information. So if I try drawing this from the top, um, I guess it's possible, but it's going to take more than two sketches. So, uh, let's just try and do this with a couple sketches and some other features. I'm not sure if that's going to be possible, but let's try. So the first thing is make a new component. Uh, I will call this index feed and I'm going to make a sketch again. I'm going to do that front, uh, area. So it's, um, I think the document settings are still at millimeters. I think this drawing is in inches. So let me just change it to that. And I will make, um, I'll make this the 1.25 on the bottom left. And then I'll just draw from there. So I'm coming down, coming over, back up. You know, I this, uh, this user interface getting in the way is really frustrating, but it's really just because I'm so zoomed in so that you're able to see the drawing at the same time. So I'll just kind of draw in a, a way that avoids the that interface. Um, okay, so I've got this and this okay extra bad okay so let's try adding some uh, constraints just to shape it up so these should obviously be horizontal vertical easy to do and I'm going to say that these two should be collinear uh, is that true yeah that's true so let's start adding some other dimensions the distance from here to here is 1.25. Uh, the thickness of this um, section here is 0.62. See that way on the left. Whoops. And uh, the overall height from the bottom to here is 1.56. Uh, let's see, the overall dimension this way is 3.25. This says uh, seven, th what this is telling us is that it could be somewhere between 7.45 and 7.5. I'll just put 7.75. And the height of this is if you look way on the left, 0.19. Okay, it's all black, which uh, means I think it's probably fully constrained. And um, I don't know that there's any other information I can include here. Okay, let's try this. So I'm going to finish sketch and I'm going to extrude this in this direction 2.5 inches. Negative 2.5. Okay, so that's what I've got. Now, uh, I'm going to have to cut down from the top. That will include this kind of slice that's taken out at an angle, the notch in the corner, and the hole. But uh, let's take a look. So the first thing is I'm going to rename this sketch just so I know where I was. This is the front. And I'm going to make a new sketch on the top work plane. So uh, again, I'm going to hit P for project, and I'm going to project not just the body, but uh, each of these two sections in. So I'm choosing specified entities and I'm choosing both of those faces to include. So now they're in my sketch and that'll probably help me out. Okay, I'm gonna make a line from around, well, again, the UI is getting in my way, but I will make it from about here to here. So that's going to be that kind of slice that's taken out of it. Uh, and then also we've got this notch over here. I'm kind of being careful not to include some of these. You know, I wanted to make a midpoint constraint there, but I didn't want to, so I moved over a little bit. Okay, let's add some dimensions. So the, the angle here, it says is 50 degrees. 
Uh, it says the distance from here to here is one inch. And that's that. Um, over here, it tells me that, well, we've got this as 1.25 from the previous sketch. Uh, it tells me that this is 40 degrees. And then we're going to need a dimension here if we want that to turn black. So this is 0.25. Okay, I think that's it. Now, uh, we do want to put a hole there, but I think because it says, uh, if you want to decipher what's in the drawing, it says point, uh, negative 0.75 C bore. That means counter bore. So uh, that is a 0.75. Okay, so it's saying the counter bore is 0.75 inches and it's 0.38 deep. The hole itself is 0.5 inches in diameter. So that's a lot of information to, uh, I, I mean, I could draw two circles here and extrude them to those depths, but actually we do have the hole feature. So let's just make a point that we can use to reference uh, for the hole feature later. So I'll make a point where it's supposed to be. So I have the dimensions for that. It is, this uh, is 0.75 from here to here. Okay, D. Click there, click there. Oh, it does not like this, what's happening? Okay, let's try that again. There's my point. I want to say from there to there. That's interesting, I'm not sure what's happening here. Uh, my drawing in a, hmm. Very curious, well, let's try from here to here. Okay, I'm not sure what was going on there, but uh, that distance should be 0.75. And looks like, now this is interesting, the, uh, the distance from the left is based on that, that uh, groove that's in the bottom. So let me just move this a little bit. So it's based on that. Now, so it's from there to the point. So what I should do in this point is I can hit P for project and I can say, actually include this point in my sketch. And when I hit okay and go back to the top, uh, now I've got that point as a reference. So I can make a dimension that goes from here to here. And that is 0.38. Okay some new things we're finding out. So we can project uh, specific things. Uh, we don't have to project everything. We don't need, I mean, I could have put this edge in there, but uh, we don't need everything from, um, from the previous sketch, but that one is kind of necessary for this. Okay, I will hit finish sketch and let's do some extruding. So this uh, triangle that we made, whoops, let's uh, swipe up to get, to repeat the extrude, I'm holding down and I wanna get this profile right here. And what I wanna do is start from this face and go up from there. So I want to start from object, I will click that object and then I will drag up and I will just make sure that instead of a distance, it's all and it'll cut all the way through. If I hit okay there, let me hide the sketch uh, and the other sketch. So that's looking good. So let's bring that sketch back. Uh, I didn't rename it. Let me rename it now. So this is top. Uh, what else do we need to do from here? This notch needs to come out. So I will extrude. I don't want to extrude right now because I have the whole all these faces selected. So I'll hit escape first and then extrude just this triangle here. And uh, again, I want to go from this face. And this time I'm going down. Uh oh, what's happened? From here. Uh, I've got two things selected somehow. So let's, let's just get rid of everything. I want this profile, this triangle here. And uh, the object that I want to select from is here. And then the distance is going to be going down negative 0.19. Okay. That seemed complicated, but just a lot of... Uh, getting the right thing selected. So I think at this point we are mostly done. We've got a, an angle that has to happen over here and you might be tempted to say, well, let me make a sketch on this side, which you could totally do. But uh, I think we can do this all with just two sketches and a couple of other 
uh, features from the solid workspace. So let's do that. I will hide this sketch. Well, actually I need it for the hole. So let's uh, make the hole first. I'm going to create a hole. And now all the information from the drawing can be entered in here. So I'm going to say I want it at a point, which is oh, interesting. So can I select? Okay, I've got this face, but I want that point. Let's see. Let's see if we can reference this point. Hmm. Okay. Well, this is the problem we had before where it's it's not able to say that's the point, but we want it up here. So that's a little inconvenient. I guess I could have drawn it differently if I wanted to, but one thing I can do is just um, essentially move that, that point up to this face. Um, it's not great, but let's let's create a sketch on this face and let's just hit P to project that point. And now we've got a, a sketch that is just for that one point. It's probably another way to do that, but let's uh, just call this the drill point. Now I can go to hole, choose that and make sure that all of my settings are here. So first there is a counter bore and the size of that counter bore is 0.75. And the depth of that counter bore is 0.38. And the diameter of this drill should be 0.5. And the depth, I want to go all the way through. So that should do it. Let me hit OK and see what it looks like. So, you know, kind of it looks like the drawing. The drawing doesn't show that the hole has to go all the way through, but that looks about right. Okay, so that's that's figured that out. I mean, I was trying to avoid having more than two sketches, but that's I think that's okay. Okay, so to get that um, kind of uh, chamfered edge or sloped edge, we're actually going to use the chamfer tool. So instead of making a sketch on the side and uh, and extruding it like we have been doing, I think we're going to take advantage of one of the features that can um, just do it for us given the, the two dimensions that we have. So let's try modify chamfer. I think most people are used to like this default, which is equal distance where you say, oh, just chamfer this so we can knock off an edge, um, or knock off an edge at 45 degrees, I think is the, the default, right? Which means the, you know, uh, in this case, 0.1 in this direction, 0.1 in that direction. But we can uh, say that we actually want to use a distance and an angle. So let's try that. I'll do that again. I'm going to choose this edge. Uh, now, distance and angle says this is the distance and this is the angle. We know the angle is 30 degrees, um, but what's the distance? Well, in the drawing, it says 0.94, but it's not 0.94 down from there. It's 0.94 to the left. So I think if we hit flip, there we go. So now we can put in 0.94 and then hit OK. So that's, I don't know, I think that might be surprising to some people that Chamfer can even do that because uh, normally we just use it in this really limited way. There are other features like draft and so on. Um, you might be able to do it with a draft, but uh, we also could make a sketch and then cut it over. But it's kind of nice to just see a feature here that's like, oh, that's angling that edge. But uh, it's up to you. There are probably other ways to do it. Uh, I think that one works pretty well but is just something that's, I think, overlooked normally that we have that ability with the chamfer tool. Okay, let me know if you have any questions or if you've figured out something that I've done wrong. <laughs> Take care.